morning guys and girls uh, welcome to part two of how to turn a slice into a draw today we're going to talk about hip rotation through your downswing so let's get stuck in shall we so like i said in the intro welcome to part two of how to turn a slice into a draw if you haven't already seen the first one go and check out that on my channel it's really really um, necessary to go and watch if you need this part of the work today we're going to talk about how to rotate hips through impact and actually through the downswing because that is really key to controlling club face so let's get going so based on what we've already so we spoke about in part one uh, obviously talking about rotation of shoulders through the backswing and through the downswing this is also what is needed to control club face so what we've talked about um, in part one is the club path now we're going to talk about how we can control club face through that we're using our hips now one thing you can get very led to, into doing is just solely using your shoulders to rotate thinking that you're using as much your hips as much as you need to be. This is something I got sucked into until I had a lesson and was told that my hips weren't doing a lot. This is something that you really need to kind of keep an eye on. So when driving through the ball with hips, obviously our hips will rotate naturally on the way back. So we'll get into the position that we spoke about before. Okay, so ro we've rotated arms into this position. Now the transition from kind of backswing to downswing, in my feeling, is that hips is actually the first thing to move that sets off the shoulders rotating. So it's actually quite a, nice, a good feeling to kind of think that the first thing once you get to the top of your backswing is the hips that drive forward. Now one thing you'll see a lot of kind of pros like McElroy for instance use hips really well. It looks like he actually kind of sinks down and drives. What you don't want to end up doing is just kind of squatting and rotating because obviously you'll then start chunking the ball which is not what we want to do. So you want to try and keep on a level, level kind of platform the whole way through the swing. Okay, so this is one thing again you, you can work on whether it's just kind of picking a point in front of you that you kind of keep locked onto and you feel that you don't want to move off that, whatever it is. Because the moment you kind of dip, that's when your strike consistencies will drop, which we don't want to do. So like I've said, the key thing to this is to kind of try and stay level through your swing. So what I mean is not dipping, not coming up, because that's why I said you'll get striking consistencies. Now, as you get to the top of your downswing, you want to feel like your right hip is really kind of starting the, the downswing so by doing that i'm not saying kind of sliding forward so kind of sliding towards target i'm not saying coming forward i'm saying it almost rotates on its pivot so you really want to feel like your right hip is driving and rotating towards target while staying level so if you look at me when i'm kind of swinging this is a great routine to do it which you would have seen on a lot of videos before get into your normal stance put a club on you like this and just practice doing the hip drive so you rotate your shoulders and then as soon as you're back, the first thing that you move is you drive, you drive the hip around. So you almost want to feel like the hip is dictating the downswing and the shoulders then react to that. That will help you, A, get power and speed through the swing. B, it should help you kind of um, control club face a lot easier because if you generally won't rotate with your hip, your arms will take over. Therefore, hands might start doing a little bit too much to try and make up for the lack of rotation in your golf swing. So that's the routine that you and, and the drill you really want to try and practice. So get to the top of your swing. You'll see a lot of players do it in the warm up. Is get to the top of your swing, stay nice and level, and then drive with the hip and stay on that level. Now, see on a driving range of things, it's quite easy because you can just pick a point, sport, uh, you can pick a spot in front of you, and you can rotate and drive through on that spot, and you can see that I'm not moving there. It's really key to actually trying to get some speed and, and, um, and consistency of strike with this swing. You can get very easily led into just rotating with arms and staying still, or what you think is still. This will lead to club face issues, might then lead to strike issues th further down the line. So driving with the hips is really important, guys. So as you can see behind me, I'm gonna show you a few demonstrations of how to practice both part one and part two in a simple drill. Um, check it out because hopefully it'll help you guys too, but um, let's get started, shall we? So this drill is actually something you might see a player called Matsuyama do quite a lot as in normal, just to try and feel the connections right at the top of the swing. And that's just pause, even if it's for a second at the top of your backswing, just so you can feel like you are moving the right, the right areas at the right time. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So this is actually a routine I take on the golf course as well for me. So if you feel you, have, you can do it as a pre-shot routine as well, it can be really helpful, even if it's just to practice swing behind the ball. So as you can see here, I'm just getting set up to play uh, my practice routine. Um, you'll see now, as we spoke about in part one, I will take my club back with my chest and my shoulders a couple of times just to get that feeling familiar again. 
and then as I get to the top of my down, my back swing, sorry, I will drive with hips on my right shoulder, uh, and that allows me to control the club face. Here is another example of me doing that uh, without the pause at the top this time, and you can see a nice little uh, tiny baby draw. Guys, here are the numbers uh, to show you my results. So you can see the results just from that little drill there. Uh, there's the picture form, I'll show you the number form now. So the club facing and swing path are the ones we want to look at. So this will kind of lead me on to my next part and that's just knowing what numbers to hit to hit a draw. Um, this is really important when you kind of hit a shot, certain shot shape, you need to know what it is you need to do. Um, very easy to say I need to win it, hit in and out, but there's certain things with club face relation that some people I've found get quite confused with. So as you can see here, I'm into out four and open one. So like I say, having these two kind of drills in play and these two kind of routines and these two thoughts, I'm able to go from out to in and open to into out and open as well. So which leads me on to part three and I will talk you through that tomorrow. So guys, thanks for watching. Hope it helps. Again, if it has helped or even if it hasn't, just set, put a little comment down below and I can talk, and we can uh, discuss why it has helped or why it, why it hasn't helped. Guys, again, thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.